do this clip. Uh, this one's a good one. This one's a good one because this is piece de resistance. Piece de resistance, Brendan. And what it displays to me is one thing is that Brendan hasn't figured out a lie yet for why he hasn't performed at the comedy mothership because nobody's probably brave enough to ask him or he's not in a position to basically have somebody ask him anyway. But he also displays a very good ability to kind of pivot out of something he doesn't want to talk about, which I didn't think he'd be capable of. But I think if you're a good liar, you know how to lie and you also know how to avoid saying things, you know? So he does it pretty well here because I feel like Adam Carolla knows exactly what he's saying to Brendan. He knows exactly why he asked this question because most likely one of his producers told him about the fire and the kid sub or about the meme that he hasn't performed that the fucking comedy mothership yet, even though him and Rogan are meant to be called good friends. Like he knows something. This is definitely on purpose. And Brendan kind of dealt with it kind of well. I'm not going to lie. He avoided it well, but it's also evidence for me that he knows why he's not able to perform there yet, but he hasn't made up enough of a lie in his head to kind of put out there because no one really asked him anyway. So let's play this clip because this is really interesting. Now, I know famously Rogan said, you got to stop fighting, uh -huh. right? Should there be a version of that for stand-up? Should there be a tribunal where like other comedians just say to somebody, it's been 11 years I just saw you your gotta act. Move on. It, it's time to get that job at the supermarket. I think eleven with years Freeman. is. A, yeah, I think. <laughs> I think eleven years is a good marker. But that's what like Mitzi was for, right? For Mitzi Shore at the yes. store, she was kind of. She was wrong sometimes, you know. Like she turned down Seinfeld, and like you know, she took some L's, but she took a lot of. Imagine Brendan's talking about Mitzi Shore, one of the legendary figures behind, you know, stand up success in fucking Americas, saying she took some L's. <laughs> I <laughs> can't love Brendan. The hubris on this guy to even talk about her in this way, considering his own career is absolutely incredible, man. W's. There, there, there's that aspect of it. Like when you stop getting booked at the improv or the comedy store or Laugh Factory, like, hey, man, I have to go work at the grocery store. I disagree with this. I think I left a comment on one of Unix videos and I kind of said the same thing I'm going to say now. Unfortunately, I'm going to repeat it, so bear with me. I think one of the reasons why comedy and even DJing to a certain extent the field that I'm in is so weird is that it's not really a question of whether you're good at what you do it's not really a question of whether you're really funny or whether you're a really good DJ it's not really a question about that nowadays with the way the scene is or the way the industry or whether life is in general getting your own clout up having a fan base will actually allow you to be able to perform at all these places he mentioned, comedy store, comedy club, I mean, Ice House, all these places will allow you to put on shows there or book you because they know you're a draw, as draw, as Brenda would say. You can put bums in seats, you can sell tickets. So because of that, you can't really tell somebody when to give it up because all they have to do is become famous like Brendan did in his stand-up. Here's a good example. Brendan was famous before or well-known before he'd started doing stand-up. So then when he started performing in front of crowds, he's performing in front of sold out 500 plus crowds because of the success of his podcast and because of him being known in the UFC and all the other things he did before that. That kind of helped. But in the long run, it also hurt his career because he didn't get a chance to practice in front of like small audiences, do open mics and stuff. He immediately went and played in front of his own audiences, playing in front of the home crowd, killing it because they just liked to see him on stage and never actually learning that way. So he never really, you know, got to grips of it. But also it's difficult to tell him to stop because even if he's terrible at stand up, he still sells some tickets because he's still got a fan base. So similar to DJing, you know, it's not like sports where it's kind of black and white. Like, do you put up numbers? Are your stats, you know, um, are your stats similar or above the person next to you or your next competition? In this sort of like arts world, it's more so can you attract an audience? Can you sell tickets? Look what's happening with celebrity boxing with these influencers. These influencers won't be fighting and doing boxing cards and shit if they didn't have a following, if they weren't able to fucking sell pay-per-views. That's what the name of the game is. So there is no Rogan talk for a comedian, really. It doesn't really exist because 
all a comedian has to do is get famous become well known have a popping podcast and then parlay that into stand up and then suddenly you're selling tickets so it's hard to say who's good and who's bad because funny is objective and also most clubs only care about your ability to sell tickets from what we've seen so far brendan you know isn't that funny we don't think so but he still gets booked because he can sell tickets in some locations yeah is uh i haven't been to rogan's club over there how is it i i didn't get a chance to go either because uh we did the show on saturday i came on friday because Callan had shows at uh cap city the new cap city mm. so i did <laughs> marty moose are you a draw no i'm definitely not a draw but that's the thing that i don't mind though i'm okay with it i think i was talking about it the other day with the i love mcconan thing i love mcconan went on a bit of a rant and exposed like metro booming post malone and sway lee for essentially only you know leaving him on scene when he was ice cold then the moment he put out that song with NBA Youngboy and he was all over the blogs, they all kind of hit him up and said, yeah, amazing tune, blah, blah, blah. And he was obviously pissed off by that, right? Because it kind of showed how fucking flaky everybody's in the industry. But that's how it is. I'm pretty sure once I get to a really su successful, good level and I start doing my DJ streams and I'm getting like 10,000 fucking views on my streams, I'm sure all these clubs that I was emailing to have sets there and can I submit a mix to be booked there, consideration, and I get no replies i'm sure they will see my numbers and be like oh he's got a following and they'll suddenly start replying to emails again i'm not gonna take that personally it just is what it is it's the nature of the business um you just have to kind of use it to your advantage and i think you know for better or worse brendan used it to his advantage but i also think it did fuck him over long term because he didn't start from like a quote unquote humble beginnings he kind of started on third base and then thought because he's hanging around with Rogan and Bill Burr and all these guys, Joe Diaz, he thought he was also a big established dude. So it's really difficult if you're hanging out with Rogan to then suddenly go to open mic, you know? You kind of feel like it's beneath you when really he's what he should have done. Anyway, let's continue. The two shows with Callan at Cap City instead of going to the mothership. And then Saturday night, he was like, all right, let's go to the mothership after the, the fight campaign. I'm like, let's do it. And then we got done at like, I don't know, 1245, one. Mm -hmm. So now he's you hear what he said there. He, I'm gonna be pitched one more time. One more time. I'm booked at the improv or the comedy store or laugh factory. Like, hey man, I have to one go work at the grocery store. Yeah. Is uh I haven't been to Rogan's club over there. How is it? I I didn't get Adam Crowler knows he's never played there before. He knows this. He knows. I didn't get a chance to go either because uh we did the show on Saturday. I came on Friday because Callan had shows at uh, Cap City, the new Cap City. Mm. So I did the two shows with Callan at Cap City instead of going to the mothership. And then Saturday <laughs> night, he was like, all right, let's go to the mothership after the, the fight campaign. I'm like, let's do it. And then we got done at like, I don't know, 12.45, 1. Do you honestly believe that this guy who loves Rogan would not make time to go to the mothership if he was booked? Do you honestly believe that? That he was just so busy running around fucking Texas that he didn't have time to go to the mothership? It's an incredible, again, you have to give the guy props. His ability to lie on the spot and make up things is second to none. I don't think there's ever, ever an option that he was going to play at the comedy membership because I think somebody, or oh, let me say, sorry if I continue. Uh, John Doe says he's the only comic that thinks he's too big for small venues. I'm in NYC and some huge names show up at smallish clubs. I saw Norman bring up Jerry Seinfeld at Gotham, not a draw. Exactly, John Doe. I don't get it personally. I'd want to improve get up as much as possible he doesn't want to do that uh, Mike Muse says remember Callum ignored Rick Gossman's invitation on on TYSO this year he bagged Rick to get on there you'll get there easy yeah yeah for sure big up Mike Muse yeah big up big up yeah. no no I'm fine with it I, I know what it is I know the game I understand the game it's about numbers it's about clout the moment you are useful to somebody they're certainly going to be hitting you up again so I know you know it'll all come back around it's not a personal thing but I'm just saying in his level Brendan's level if you start comedy in your mid-30s, you have to give yourself a chance to get good. And I think the only way to get good at something like this is to do it a lot and not perform in front of your own crowd because that's how you're going to get proper feedback, right? Go to like a random, like what you like what John Doe says, drop in at random clubs that don't know you and then perform because that maybe is a time where you're going to improve. I'd think so. But he didn't want to do that. And, you know, it kind of didn't serve him well. But the uh, the lie that he made up that he didn't have time to go to the fucking mothership is brilliant on the spot made up that lie you gotta love it 